Okay, welcome everybody to our information session tonight where we will be talking about our Master in Football Business and Management online program. It's a, it's a pleasure to have everybody connecting here tonight. And I will begin by introducing myself for those that may not know who I am. I know there's some familiar names here attending tonight, former students. Um, but for those that may not know about who we are or who I am at SDI, my name is Diego Valdez. I am the Director General at the Sports Business Institute Barcelona. And what we do is we have an institute that provides executive education for those that want to start or move into leadership positions in the football industry. We've been operating for the past eight years out of Barcelona. And in those eight years, uh, we've built relationships with some of the top clubs, federations, um, media outlets, representation firms, um, brands, etc., in the football industry. Um, now, as far as my background, well, I'm also a sports journalist. I've been an international sports journalist accredited by the Spanish Press Association for a number of years. So my experience comes in the industry both as a journalist and as a sports marketing consultant. And in these eight years, we've worked with organizations such as the ones you see here on screen with FIFA, Manchester United, Liverpool, Manchester City, FC Barcelona, Inter Milan. I mean, the list goes on. We've worked with a lot of executives, a lot of organizations in these clubs and these federations. Um, so our experience is quite extensive across the football industry. Now, um, I know tonight um, there's a lot of people that wanted to attend and, and haven't uh, been able to um, connect because of timing uh, differences. We have a lot of people in Asia that have shown an interest in this course. Um, so for you, you will uh, be able to watch the recording. But for those that are attending here um, live tonight, um, it will be interesting to know uh, where are you connecting from? I mean, I know I, I recognize some names here, but um, perhaps you can go ahead in the, in the chat box and type where you're connecting from. Um, that'll give us an idea as well as to who we have online here tonight. And it'll be nice to see. So let's just have a look. So we have Constantinos. Hi, Constantinos from Cyprus. And then we have Santi. Hi, Santi from London. Okay, excellent. There's um, Hamza from Belgium as well. Hi, Hamza. George from Ipswich. Hi, George. It's nice to see you, George. Okay, good. So we have uh, people from uh, across different countries here tonight, which is great because that means that um, our audience, as per usual, is very international, very diverse from different countries and continents. Right, so what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to talk about the master's program. I'm going to give an overview about, um, you know, the program itself and what it entails. And then we're going to open up for your questions because I'm sure some of you may have questions. I know there's a few people on here that have already registered, that are already ready to start in October. So if you have any questions yourselves that um, are already part of the cohort, of course, that's a great opportunity to, to use this space. And likewise, for those that are considering this program, that have seen it um, and are thinking about it, if you have any specific questions, I'll uh, be opening the floor a little bit later, just so you, um, you, know, you have an opportunity to, to ask any questions. We should run um, this presentation for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, then we'll open it up for a Q&A, and we should be done in around 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Approximately. We may go a little bit longer if we have a few more questions, but that's, that's the aim for tonight. So we don't want to keep you here too, too long. Just want to give you the essentials of the, of the program. Right. So first of all, it's an online program. It's 100% online, except for two days at the end, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So in these times of pandemic, uh, where travel is difficult, where face-to-face -face environments are, are limited, you know, it's an opportunity to equip yourself with uh, the knowledge, the skills in an online environment that works um, very well uh, to acquire, obviously, the knowledge and the network. So we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. But it is an online master. It is 100% online that you can do from wherever you're based. And it starts on October 19th. So in a little bit less, sorry, in a little bit over a month, we will be starting the first uh, session. And the program runs from October up until the end of May. 
Um, and then we have the two days in Barcelona, which is the graduation ceremony and networking event. But I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we move along in the, in the presentation. By the way, if you have any questions that you'd like to be, um, you know, that you'd like to have answered while I'm doing the presentation, feel free to use the chat box as well. And I'll make sure to pause if there's any specific questions about any of the slides that I'm discussing. Okay, so let's begin with what this program does. Well, essentially, it's uh, designed, it's been designed by a team of professionals in the football industry to equip you with the skills, with the knowledge, with the competencies to understand the business side of the football industry. Okay, so um, when you finish this course, you come out with a very detailed background across different areas in the football industry for you to either start or advance your career in the football industry. Now, what do we cover? What are the subjects that we cover? Well, I'll go through some of the modules in the terms that we have um, you know, in the curriculum, but you will see that there's basically every single aspect of the football industry it's covered in the master's program. So whether we talk about marketing, sponsorship, stadium management, how to organize and run events, the financial management of sports properties, clubs, et cetera. So we look at all of this. This is in term one. Um, term one, by the way, uh, runs from October till the end of, um, uh, sorry, till the Christmas break in December. And then after Christmas, we begin term two. Term two, we begin looking at, this is very important and very relevant in today's industry, as you know, the digital side of the business. So digital transformation, digital marketing, monetization, CRM, data analytics. So all the data, how it's managed, this is all looked at in very, um, you know, very specific detail. So you understand and you are equipped, as I mentioned before, with those skills to be able to perform, uh, whether it is in a digital role or a sports marketing role, et cetera. We also look at fan engagement, community relations, social media, evidently a big part of it, and communications in football. Um, in a moment, you'll see who we've brought as speakers to, to deliver these different um, modules. But term two, it runs from January up until uh, March. And then after that, we have term three, which begins uh, after March and runs all the way up until the end of May. And we look at the international strategy of football clubs. How does a football club become a global property? So looking at how to expand to emerging markets. Um, we also look at the performance management of athletes in football, how to brand athletes, how to you know, sign endorsements for athletes. Um, obviously, player representation, so the role of the intermediary, the agent, we also look at this. Looking at it also from the perspective of sports law, legislation, um, image rights, and then we have a final project. So these are just some of the, um, the core topics that we will cover. Evidently, as we move forward in the course, there's also additional material that gets added in different elements. So whenever we look at, for example, the, the international uh, strategy of a football club, we look very deeply across different markets. Um, when we talk about digital, we also look at for example, esports. We look at all the new trends that are happening in the industry. So, at the end of the day, this program has been designed for you to be equipped with the knowledge, the skills to be able to perform in a role in the football industry, whether it is you're looking uh, to start in a more entry level job, um, if you're more, you know, if you're younger, or if you're looking to transition or to move into a leadership position in the football industry. Okay? So that's the curriculum. Now, who do we bring? Well, you're going to see that this master's has been um, designed to be done um, in a very industry-oriented approach. So what we wanted to stay away from was having uh, a lot of textbook, academic, dense theory, because we believe that the best people that can teach these concepts are the ones that are doing it day in, day out. Um, in the football industry. So we've assembled a lineup of speakers that come and deliver these modules that all have extensive experience across the football industry. So just looking at some of the names here, Marcus Breglek, he is the former um, director of marketing and media at Liverpool Football Club, currently is the chief marketing officer at AS Monaco, 
He delivers a couple of the modules in marketing and sponsorship, looking also at a global football club. Evidently, he, you know, his experience is very valuable because working for clubs like uh, Liverpool, Monaco, and you know, top European clubs, that gives um, a lot of insight into the material and the concepts that, uh, that he delivers. Then we have um, others like Rich Lamb, Rich, um, you know, senior sponsorship professional. He's worked with Manchester United, Inter Milan, West Ham United. Uh, he was based in China for many years, working for Manchester United in their, um, in their Hong Kong office, in fact, um, doing a lot of deals for Manchester United. He then moved on to Inter Milan. He's also worked with um, West Ham United, and now he works as a consultant. Um, he actually consults for the NFL as well. So, you know, top, top professionals that have a lot of experience in the industry. Um, you know, you can see some of the names here. We won't run through all of them, but Ornella Desiree, uh, working for FIFA, so one of the top sports lawyers out there working for um, FIFA. She's been collaborating with SBI for a number of years. So you're, you're going to get firsthand experience. You're going to get experience, knowledge from people that, you know, for example, Ornella, um, uh, in our master last year, she was giving us uh, some of the regulations that are happening at FIFA now with the agents. So who better to teach that than the organization that is, you know, uh, responsible for creating those new regulations. So you're actually going to hear all of these concepts, all of these um, different um, subjects from people that do this in their day-to-day -day job. Uh, another person that uh, is really interesting um, is Julie Ferre. Julie Ferre uh, used to work as the head of partnerships at FC Barcelona. He also worked at Monaco after that, now working with um, independent consulting uh, across a number of projects. So, you know, obviously a club like FC Barcelona, massive across the world, how they sign their partnerships. It's, it's not every day that you have access to these types of insights, these types of professionals that share this information. Um, and then others that have experience at UEFA, FIFA events like Esther, um, you know, going through the list here, we can keep looking at other profiles like Pedro Iriondo from FIFA, who works in the corporate development management um, role, um, Carmen Aceves, uh, formerly sponsorship director at Atletico Madrid and the director at WWP Spain, one of the biggest agencies. Um, Amir Somoji, Sports Value, a uh, uh, financial consulting firm. Uh, he's the managing director. Male Koido, um, FA registered intermediary. She leads our intermediary course, in fact, who some of you may know as, uh, as you are um, taking part in that course. Christian Martin. Christian Martin is interesting as well because he has an agency. He's the CEO of an agency called Be Engaged Sports. And uh, they represent top talent uh, in Spain and Europe. Um, so they have uh, players uh, in La Liga, in uh, the Premier League. Um, so someone like him uh, is interesting to bring on because he talks about how to market professional footballers and look for endorsement deals for them and also sponsorship um, for clubs. So interesting to see profiles like that because the other thing is we didn't want to just bring professionals from clubs or federations because that would not give a holistic view of the industry. We like to bring people from financial consulting firms in, in sport, uh, player representatives, um, you know, marketing agencies, um, governing bodies, and, and not just uh, you know, FIFA and UEFA. We also have people from CONCACAF. We have people from, uh, we're looking to bring in somebody from COMEMO, from Latin, uh, Latin America, from South America. So, we try to give a holistic view of the industry, not just looking at it from the prism of a football club. A few of the other people that we've um, already confirmed, um, we have Marcus Bartos, who is a media rights consultant for UEFA. So he works with, uh, now he's working with uh, <clears throat> the UEFA Nations League. Um, so across the, the media rights, delivering that for UEFA. Um, formerly uh, as well, the head of media rights for uh, the DFB in Germany. We have Steve Antrobus, who um, Steve uh, formerly worked as a partnerships manager at Manchester City. Um, Steve has also participated in um, SBI courses before. So some of these speakers, um, like Pedro Iriondo, in fact, as well from FIFA, they've done courses with us. So um, it's also nice because it's part of a family. You really join a family. I mean, a lot of the speakers have been part of SBI courses before. So you're going to see that um, whenever it's time to network, to engage with them, they're very open to collaborate. They're very open to 
hear uh, about your own aspirations, your own objectives, and, and they're going to be able to guide you and uh, answer your questions in the live sessions. By the way, the, the, the platform that we use is this platform. It's WebEx. So all the course is delivered with this platform. Today, you guys are muted because this is a webinar. But in the courses, everybody has their microphone activated and it's very interactive. And of course, some of you that have participated in other SBI courses will, will attest to that and will know that, that it's not a one-way conversation. It's a two-way street because we are interested to hear more about your own experiences, what you bring to the table, because that adds to the learning experience and enriches everybody's um, you know, um, um, experience uh, throughout the course. Okay, so sometimes I speak too fast, so I need to pace myself and grab a little bit of uh, a sip of water. Finally, a few others that we have confirmed, Enrique Ripoy. Enrique um, is uh, an international sports lawyer. I mean, um, he's such a wealth of information because uh, he worked for one of the top law firms in football, um, uh, Crespo Ruiz Huerta, and uh, you know, he's represented clients such as FC Barcelona. Uh, I mean, they've, they've been involved with uh, high, high profile cases. Um, you know, so uh, somebody like him as well brings a lot to the table because the anecdotes they share, the cases they present, um, you know, they're, they're really high level. I mean, you're really talking to people that know what they're doing in the football industry. Uh, Mario Leo, the CEO of Result Sports, those of you that may not know about Result Sports, um, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit later as well. You know, they do digital monitoring, digital monetization um, for clubs and federations. So Mario and his team work with top clubs, including Bayern Munich, Juventus, FC Barcelona, et cetera. And he's also working at a new project with uh, Africa. So top guy to, to bring when it comes to digital. And then Mark Brady. Mark Brady is also a former SBI student. In fact, he did the master's program last year. Um, he's a director at uh, sports management at UCB, which is a university in, in the UK, and formerly worked at West Bromwich Albion in, in their foundation. So he's going to talk about uh, particularly uh, fan engagement and building the fan persona. And we have a few other guest speakers that um, we are just about to confirm. So stay tuned because there's more. There's more people in the lineup that we're going to bring. Uh, at the end of the day, what we want to bring is people that add value to you, that prepare you, that give you the knowledge that you need in order to be able to perform in the football industry. So at the end of the master's program, uh, what you want is you want to gain the knowledge from top industry professionals so that you feel prepared, that you're ready to move into a role, whether you want to move into marketing or events or operations or you know, media or whatever that may be. Um, we covered it all across a number of sectors within the football industry, okay? So that's the speakers, that the, the content, so let's talk a little bit about the methodology. How does it work? Well, first off, this program has been designed to be done in parallel with other professional, academic, or personal commitments. So that means that whether you're studying, whether you're working, whether you have you know, personal commitments with your family or other, other um, you know, personal events, you can do this because the weekly dedication is usually Anywhere from four to eight hours, of course, it'll vary. It's difficult to quantify this on a weekly basis, but on average, you know, four to eight hours is what you need to spend, um, you know, studying and preparing <clears throat> with this master's program. So how does it work? Well, there's an online campus where we have presentations, case studies, videos, um, you know, official documents, tests, you name it. So it's a one-stop shop, a portal where you have all the information uh, available to you 24-7. So the idea is you have content there that you begin to prepare on a weekly basis. We unlock content uh, usually on Mondays and you begin preparing for it for the master classes. The master classes are usually held on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. local time in Barcelona. There's some that may be on a Wednesday or a Tuesday, but usually Thursday evenings. And these are the virtual lectureships with the executives that I just mentioned before. So every Thursday, you have an executive that comes and speaks. And as I said, it's, a, it's not a one-way conversation. Usually what happens is the speakers have a presentation and then they have a Q&A session where we talk, we, we discuss, you, you answer, you know, we answer your questions. So it's very interactive. 
Then, on top of that, we also have um, lab sessions. So normally what happens is we have two or three master classes, and then afterwards we have a lab session. So what is a lab session? Well, a lab session is a discussion tutorial where we don't have a speaker, but we have um, uh, a moderator that looks at different cases and scenarios because we believe that learning is um, a scenario where you learn by doing. So we'll put you in situations, we'll give you cases, we'll give you scenarios uh, where you have to act as if you were already in the decision maker's role. So, you know, last year we had in some of these lab sessions, you know, um, something, um, you know, some, some uh, cases related to the pandemic. So what would you do? I mean, would you, would you, this is back when, when we first started hearing about the pandemic, what, what would you do as a decision maker? Would you, would you do this? Would you do that? You know, how would you react? Um, you know, there's other cases that we've put in the past that are very, very interesting because they really put you in a scenario where you have to act as if, act as if you already were the marketing director for a football club or working in operations at a stadium when there was a crisis or a media, you know, crisis. How would you handle it? So a lot of this is in the lab sessions. We provide these case studies for you so you actually begin preparing yourself, acting though as though you were, you know, in that, in that scenario yourselves. Um, we also have practical assignments and a final project. So again, we believe as well that it's important to put you in scenarios, put you in situations. So we do individual and team assignments and the team assignments work really well because you get, a net, you get to network, you, net to, you get to engage with your peers that are participating in the program. So, you know, last year we had a few professional football players join the course. Um, so it was very interesting because in the groups, sometimes we would have a professional footballer, somebody that was a marketing executive at a football club, somebody that came from another sector, say in finance, and then somebody who was, you know, based in, um, I don't know, another country, but more from a junior profile. So a really interesting mix to deliver a project. And then the other thing you have to remember is that in an online environment, you get people from all over the world. You know, uh, unlike in a face-to-face -face course where you usually tend to get people from the same city or the same country, in an online environment, you may have somebody from Brazil, from Belgium, from Spain, from China, from Africa, everybody connecting. So the opinions they share, the insight that um, they, they share in the, in the discussion groups is very interesting because, you know, just a simple example, you know, in the Middle East, uh, for example, weekends are Fridays and Saturdays. So just then and there, you know, having a Sunday match like El Clasico would be very difficult, different in a market such as the Arabic market because, because of that different idiosyncrasy of the market. So something as simple as that, which seems very obvious, um, really adds to the discussion in many, many elements across the year because you get people from all over the world sharing their experiences and, um, and you know, it's, it's a learning experience that we all learn from each other. In fact, I learn every year leading this program because we get people from all over the world. And of course, I don't dominate every single market of the football industry. And I learn as well from our students because they're more up to date and uh, keeping abreast as to what's happening in, in their countries. So, you know, somebody from India will know more about the market than somebody that is not based there, right? Or from Brazil or from Europe or wherever. So you get to learn from other industry professionals um, that come from all over the world. And then finally, the fifth element of the program is what we call a, four, a corporate football tour and graduation in Barcelona. So at the end of the eight months, so remember we have eight months that go from October till the end of May, every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. local time in Barcelona, we have a live class, that's, that's the way it works. But then at the end, we have two days in Barcelona where we get everybody to come down to Barcelona. We organize um, visits for you. So we take you inside FC Barcelona. In fact, our office where I'm working from today is just opposite the Camp Nou. I would show you my window, but I can see the Camp Nou here. So we take you to the Camp Nou. We take you inside FC Barcelona. We take you to Espanol, which is the other club in the city. Um, we take you to Media Pro, which is uh, one of the biggest media rights companies in the world that have La Liga TV studios, B in sports uh, studios. So we take you everywhere inside the Barcelona's um, you know, top organizations in sport. And then we culminate it with a networking dinner 
graduation dinner here in Barcelona, which is, as you may know, um, you know, Spanish cuisine, Catalan cuisine, very nice restaurant we go to uh, at the end where we all celebrate. You guys, you know, at the end get the diploma and everybody has a good time. So it's a mixture of networking, you know, having fun, of course, but also very intensive two-day uh, jam-packed um, event uh, where, uh, where we have workshops. Um, one of the days we're usually at one of the stadiums, so we operate from the stadium, so you're actually in the stadium, you know, listening to workshops. Um, so, uh, a very interesting um, event. Obviously, this is all dependent on what happens with the uh, coronavirus, but uh, we we're expecting that by June next year, which is when this event takes place, this will all be um, much more clear. So, we're hoping that for June next year, this is something that we can deliver and, uh, you know, obviously we'll keep you guys up to date. And if not, what we did this year, we did a virtual event, which is obviously never the same, but we do a virtual event where we have workshops, seminars. So whether it is virtual or face-to-face, -face, which we believe it will be face-to-face, -face, uh, but nevertheless, that's a commitment we have for you. So we'll deliver that event at the end. Now, again, how does that work with um, the methodology? Well, very simple. Mondays, you go inside the online campus, you see the material that is uploaded, usually on Mondays. You see the material that is uploaded, you can begin reviewing it, you can begin looking at it. Obviously, there's a lot of material there, so you won't be able to review it all, um, you know, in, in um, you know, perhaps in, in the same day or whatever, but you have the flexibility of doing it 24-7. And the idea is that you prepare so that on Thursdays, when we have the live sessions with the executives, you will have seen the background, you will have seen the presentations, the cases, and you are ready to come to the discussion on the Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. local time in Barcelona. By the way, all the sessions are recorded, so in case you can't attend, I can't, sorry, in case you cannot attend live, you can always go back. The recording is uploaded to the online campus, and you can, you know, you can catch up at your at your leisure. Now, one of the things that you'll see that will um, will um, you know benefit you is the network. At FBI, we really believe that networking is a big element of getting ahead in the football industry. Now, we focus this in a very specific uh, way because, well, first of all, as I mentioned before, our students and our FBI family come from all over the world. We've been in operation for eight years now, so we've had people from practically every country. I mean, last time we checked, we were at, I think, over 100 countries. Um, so there's, there's people that come from pretty much all over the world, and that's part of the FBI family alumni community. But in your cohort, there will be people, because right now already we have people from Belgium, we have people from Africa, we have people from Hong Kong, we have people from uh, Spain, we have people from, uh, where else, I think Brazil. So there's, there's you know, people from all over the world. Um, so that in itself gives you an opportunity to have contacts and connections because if you ever want to, you know, do business, travel, look for an opportunity in a, in a market, you'll always have somebody in an international, you know, uh, market that you'll be able to reach out to and say, hey, you know, can I talk to you about this or that? And many of our students, in fact, collaborate together because they, they're in touch. The other thing we do is we create a WhatsApp group for everybody in the course. So besides the live classes on Thursdays, the conversation remains alive every day because we're constantly sharing information, everybody's sharing content, and the group remains very active. So that adds value in two ways, because we share information, we share best practices, but also we engage with each other. Imagine, I'm sure you guys have been in, in um, WhatsApp groups. Imagine a WhatsApp group that's active every day for eight months. You know, you really get to know your, your, your peers and, uh, and your classmates very, very well, because it's, it's ongoing, it's interactive. And those of you that, done, that have done other uh, FBI courses will, you know, will know about this, that we, we, we incentivize this in a very strong way because we are very uh, adamant in, uh, in pushing the networking. That's a big, big part of, uh, of SBI. You know, there's other programs out there that are very valuable in the market. Um, but one of the things where we, we really look to uh, differentiate ourselves is bring a network of a different array of professionals. Like I said, we have a lot of professional football players that do our programs. So that's something that we believe adds a lot of value as well to students, because it's not every day that you have, for example, one of our former students is uh, Wes Morgan of Leicester City, 
I mean, when he was doing the course, um, this was before the pandemic. Um, you know, he's pre he's playing Premier League football every every week, um, and then he's connecting Thursday nights and doing the lessons here. And you know, the insight that he shares and um, you know the conversations that are had in those in those discussion groups. I mean, they're they're very unique because it's not every day that you have a Premier League player that tells you know his experiences, how things are being you know lived uh, from his perspective, and not just Premier League players. We have people from all over the world that have different experiences, so everybody shares their experience. But what I mean is that the network is very wide. The professionals um, have, a, have a different background. Right now, who do we collaborate and what organizations do we, you know, do we work with and have been involved with or partner with? So here you see just a few of them. So why do I say this? Well, not to blow our own horn on SBI because you know, that's not the point of this. It's, it's to share with you that there are opportunities to network with professionals that work in these organizations, that collaborate with these organizations. So when you do the master's program, this is, this is our flagship program at SBI. Um, so those of you that have done other short courses will have seen how we operate, but this is you know, multiplied by 10 because we, we really um, you know, deliver uh, many contacts across all of these um, you know, organizations and many more across the football industry. So um, you know, this is something that, um, that if you're looking to get into the football industry, one of the biggest handicaps, one of the biggest difficulties people have is building that network, is knocking on that door and or sending that email or that LinkedIn message and getting a response. And the reason most of the time, you know, people who are just do it cold don't get a response is because there is no element of trust. You know, if you do that on your own, it's going to take a long time to do because, you know, people don't know who you are and what your, you know, what your um, agenda is. Whereas if you're already part of a community, you're already part of a family, it's much easier to reach out to these organizations, to these executives. And, um, and that, you know, that goes a long way. That really does go a long way in helping you achieve your objectives and uh, your aspirations. Um, we're nearly done here, so uh, we're going to get to your questions very soon. But uh, just a, key, a few more things to, to, to go through. As I mentioned before, this is Wes, Wes Morgan from Leicester City, captain of Leicester City. Um, this is him in Barcelona for our two-day event. So he flew down here to be with the, the rest of his classmates. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, he um, gifted um, us with a shirt, signed shirt by the whole team at Leicester City and um, brought it over to us. That's uh, the other person there is David Tolo from Espanol. So uh, we actually gave that shirt to David because of uh, his collaboration with us. So uh, he was a big uh, Premier League uh, fan, uh, David. Uh, you know, super fan of the Premier League. And when he heard that Wes Morgan was going to come and being going to be part of um, our delegation, uh, he was super excited. And uh, that's Wes giving him the, the signed shirt um, with all the Leicester City players. Now, um, so, you know, you see, we have a, we have a nice community that, uh, that is very collaborative and very open to, you know, to be involved uh, across uh, the world. Right, now, Another thing that is important, and this is something that we uh, have been very, um, very, how can I say this? We, we've been working on this very hard, and we've been bettering and bettering this, this element of the master's program every year. Now, how does the mentorship uh, program work? Well, essentially, we provide you with a team of mentors, industry experts, that will understand what are your specific aspirations. Because what happens in many programs out there, and this is, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just uh, um, telling you a little bit about what the feedback that we get from, from uh, our students. Normally, there's a program, people do it, um, they learn, uh, but then at the end of the program, there's that element of, well, where do I go next? Or how can I move forward in my career? And, you know, it'd be nice to get somebody to support me. Well. What we do with the mentorship program is we actually um, understand what your aspirations are from the beginning. So, you know, there's people from all over the world with different aspirations, different age groups, different locations. So somebody who is coming from the finance sector based in the UK um, that wants to work in finance and football will have very different aspirations than a professional footballer like Wes, for example, that may be looking to move into a role of a sporting director or somebody that's looking to work in social media at a football club. I mean, these, these are all very, very different objectives. 
So it wouldn't make much sense if we just delivered the program and not understood exactly what you wanted to get out of it. So what we do with the mentorship is we understand what your aspirations are, we look at them together with our team of mentors, and then we analyze the gaps that you need to fill. Because the gaps that you may have to fill may be different from the next guy, right? So you may need to increase your network. Someone like Wes Morgan doesn't need to increase his network because he knows you know, everybody in football, right? So there again, customized is the, is the key word. So if you're looking to increase your network, well, we then look and work with you and say, okay, well, what areas do you want to work in or what specific objectives do you have? And we're going to help you. We're going to help you increase your network. Or if you need to, you know, um, uh, improve on a certain skill or knowledge in a certain element of the football industry, we will identify that together with you and say, okay, you know, this is, these are elements that you can work on or talk to this person or, or read these articles or this book that may help you. So we will give you the tools so that when you are doing the master's program in parallel, you're also working on your own objectives and you have the guidance and the support of a team of mentors. One of our mentors is, and I'll just go back to the slide in a moment, one of our mentors is Marcus Breglick. Marcus, as I mentioned before, currently the chief marketing officer at AS Monaco, formerly with um, Liverpool FC uh, as a marketing and media director. Uh, he's worked with Nike, he's worked with Adidas. So this guy, you know, Marcus is top, top executive in football. Well, he's one of your mentors. So imagine having the person that led the commercial strategy for Liverpool, uh, that is leading the commercial strategy for Monaco um, as one of your mentors. You know, that goes a long way. That really does go a long way because you're getting insight, you're getting advice from people that know what, that know what they're talking about and they're gonna, they're gonna guide you in the right direction. You know, when you, when you are being mentored, that's a big responsibility because, you know, if you have a mentor that doesn't have experience or that gives you advice that is not, you know, that is not accurate, they may steer you uh, in the wrong direction. So we work very hard to assemble a team that will help you um, to, um, you know, to get to where you wanna be. And, um, and again, these people in the industry have a lot of experience, so they know what they're talking about and they know how to work with you to, you know, to fill those gaps and to optimize your opportunities. Now, what do we do in the mentorship program? Well, obviously we give you career guidance. So we map out a career plan based on your aspirations. Why is this important? Because during and after the master's program, you actually have a written roadmap, which is very detailed and very specific that has been designed specifically for you. So it's not a cookie, a cookie cutter, it's a specific, document based on your own objectives and aspirations that has been designed in, 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 um, in uh, what's the word, collaboration with our mentors. So you have a document that is ready for you after you finish the degree to say, okay, well, this is where I need to finish. This is where I need to work on. And not just after, during, we, we strongly believe that this, this element of looking inward to your own gaps needs to be done during the course, not when you finish it. So while you're doing the program, we're very much focusing on how we can help you. The other thing is personal branding, getting your name out there, building on your strengths, building on your previous experience. So we focus very much on those two elements because that's gonna optimize your opportunities. You know, if you come from a background where you have a strong, you know, IT uh, background, for example, that's going to be something that you're going to be looking to leverage. Um, and we're going to help you to, to leverage that. And you may say, well, I come from IT, but I want to work in marketing. That's fine. But uh, we need to understand what your strengths are so that we can then build that roadmap for you to transition to where you want to go. Right? So this is all customized. So we work on your personal brand. And then obviously networking. As I said before, you have an opportunity to build relationships with top executives in football. Just to give you an example of how this works, we had a student a couple of years ago based in the UAE. And his objective, he said, is, you know, he said to us, I want to start an academy. I want to start a, a football academy here in the UAE. Can you help me? So with the mentorship program, we said, okay, yeah, great. Um, we put him in touch with a couple of um, academy directors that we know at, uh, you know, different football clubs. And eventually, one of them actually sent him a manual as to how they operate, um, you know, gave him some advice as to how to put that, you know, together. 
and they had an exchange. You know, we put them in touch, obviously, and, and it was up to them to then uh, up to him really to to build on that contact. But um, he followed it through, and eventually he started an academy. He started an academy in uh, in the UN in the UAE, and he's still operating it, and now he's operating it in in different countries. And it was all based on the project and the mentorship that um, that he got through SBI and the contact that we put him in touch. Evidently, he did the work and he did the, the heavy lifting and in, in putting everything together. But, you know, the initial step um, was um, a contact that we provided to him and then he was able to leverage that to continue uh, working on his on his project. And that was his aspiration. So, you know, whenever it comes to networking, it's it's very much about putting you in touch with the right professionals. Right. Um, now, the other thing that is important is, especially that don't, those that don't have experience in the football industry, is we provide um, opportunities for you to gain that experience. So we have a, a collaboration with a number of organizations in the football industry. And what they do is um, they commission projects to us. And they say to us, you know, we need to work on this or we need to work on that. Can you get a group of your students to uh, deliver that for us? And this works very well because the companies, they'll have a project that they want to have executed and perhaps they don't have the time or the resources to do. So the team of students, of SBI master students, they will work together with the company or with the club or whoever we're collaborating with. They provide them a brief of what they're expecting. And then this is all done online, by the way. We have meetings regularly to update on the project and then the students deliver that at the end. So some of the, some of the um, companies that we're working with this year are Be Engaged, which is a sports management agency, which I mentioned before. Um, they have uh, a lot of talent, a lot of players in La Liga and the Premier League. So one of the things that they did with us last year is they said, you know, we want you guys to, um, to organize a football camp for one of the players that they manage. So the team of students delivered a, a project uh, as to how that football camp would be executed. And in the end, they, they, they used a lot of the ideas from the students. And of course, this is experience that you could then add to your CV because you could say, well, not only did I do my master's, but I was also involved in a, we like to call it student business consulting project. So I was already involved in a consulting project with a company for you know, two or three months. And that's very powerful for your CV, especially for those that don't have a lot of experience in sports. Because then not only do you put on your CV the masters, but you also put that you've collaborated or worked on a project for whether it is a sports management agency or a digital agency or a club. Um, you know, right now we're talking to a few clubs as well. So um, perhaps we'll have a few more of these business consulting student projects as well. So at the end of the day, you end up with experience, which is something that a lot of people are looking to specifically those that want to start or they want to begin a career in sports, this can be a bit more challenged because let's face it, it's a competitive industry and you know, not everybody will give an opportunity to people that don't have experience in sports. So here you're, you're already gaining that experience through the virtual internship. And the other thing is the great advantage is that, and now we've learned this through COVID, that we can do meetings, we can do all sorts of events um, online without necessarily having to be there face to face. So they'll provide the brief of the project, the students will work on it together. This is also very good for team building among all the students. Then they deliver the project. And who knows? I mean, um, Christian from Be Engaged, which is the company at the top, he's told me before and he said, you know, if, if the project's good um, and they deliver in, 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 a, in a good, um, you know, very well executed manner, um, who's to say that we're not going to be, you know, wanting them to collaborate with us on a long term, you know, basis. So sometimes opportunities arise out of this. Um, so that experience is very valuable and you end up with that at the end of the course. Now, what about the qualification itself? As I mentioned before, it's a very industry oriented program. But what we did is we wanted to make sure that it also had that academic seal of approval. So um, SBI has a commercial office in Miami uh, in the United States. And a couple of years ago, what we did is we were, um, you know, uh, scheduling meetings with a number of universities. Eventually, we decided to partner with Florida Global because um, they're a university that is, um, you know, growing um, quite a bit in the United States. And 
we also felt that it was important to give that academic recognition. So when you finish with your degree, you actually have a master's degree that is recognized by a university in the United States. Uh, it's endorsed by, by Florida Global. So that means that it's not just an industry-oriented program, which is great, but it also has that academic weight to it that in many organizations is still very important, right? At the end of the day, whenever you go for a job or whenever you start a business or whatever it is that you want to do after the master's, um, it's about what, what you can do and, and the work that you can, you know, the value that you can add to an organization. That's, that's at the end of the day what, what people look for. But it's true that in the curriculum, you know, it adds more weight if it's an academically recognized program rather than just um, a certificate that um, perhaps it's, uh, you know, doesn't have that academic seal of approval. So, so you do get a master's degree at the end of this. It's, um, it's academically recognized by a university in the United States. And the other thing why we wanted to do it in Miami particularly and in the United States is because when it comes to sports business, um, the United States is ahead of the game in many, in many areas. I mean, you look at what the NFL do, you look at what the NBA do, and in many ways they're ahead as to what the football industry is doing in Europe. So by being aligned with a university in the United States, it also allows for that synergy um, you know, to be involved with the sports business industry in the United States, which is a very good one to men benchmark on. Um, so we've had, in fact, a lot of people from the United States do the program as well that then go on and do you know, work with, um, we have a couple of students now working for Inter Miami, uh, David Beckham Club in, in Miami. Um, we have a couple of people working in CONCACAF, which uh, is the confederation for North America and the Caribbean, which is based out of Miami. Um, so there's a, there's a few links there that we have with the United States and specifically with, with uh, South Florida and Miami. So, and those of you that have visited Miami, you know that it's a great, uh, great city to be in. And, um, and that also allows for you uh, to an opportunity. If you ever want to, you know, explore the U S market, you also have a, a foot to, to set in Miami because you have that collaboration with this institution that, um, that we work with to, um, recognize the program. As I said before, um, finally, what we do is our corporate football tour here in Barcelona. And I like this picture a lot because it shows, they say a picture paints, uh, what is it? A picture is worth more than a thousand words. When you look at a picture like this, it shows that, um, you know, people are, are happy. They're enjoying their, their time here. And this is people that have been together eight months online that um, some of them have never met. There's very few that maybe coincide, a couple of people in London that maybe meet before the end of you know, Barcelona. But usually what happens is people don't meet until they come here. And when they meet, the, the, the overriding comment that they say is, um, it feels as though we already know each other because they've been interacting for eight months together. Um, and you see this, um, this picture, you know, everybody having a good time. Um, you know, we, we, we have a very full uh, two-day event here in the city, but we also have time to have fun. Uh, we go and have tapas, we go and have uh, a nice dinner, uh, and everybody has a good time. So if you've ever been to Barcelona, you'll know that it's a very exciting city. Um, there's, a, there's a very vibrant uh, vibe to it. Of course, uh, a football club, which is uh, um, usually very successful. I mean, uh, uh, we won't talk about uh, the uh, the thrashing in the Champions League, but uh, it's a it's a football city. It's a it's a football that it's a city that breathes football, and there's a lot of uh, organizations in sports in the city, and we take you to all of them to make sure that you have a nice experience to finish off. This is not a mandatory component, but we strongly recommend that if you're doing the program, that you really try and come because. Uh, it gives it that plus. Uh, you get to meet your classmates, you get to be in Barcelona. And again, we'll make sure that it's safe and we'll make sure that it's um, uh, according to the regulations of COVID and where we're at uh, at that stage. But, you know, um, hopefully by, by June, things are a bit more clear and we can, you know, we can all meet here in Barcelona. And if not, we'll find a way to make it happen later on. So in fact, many of the people that did the master's program last year that couldn't come to Barcelona because obviously here now we were in the middle of the pandemic in June. Um, so uh, many of them are coming next year. So that's going to add to even more networking opportunities because not only will you have your cohort participants attending, you're going to have some from the year before. So that's going to make a larger group in Barcelona. So anyway, just to keep that in mind, uh, the Barcelona event at the end, a lot of fun and uh, jam-packed with uh, a lot of visits and uh, you learn a lot as well. 
Another picture here at Media Pro, which I mentioned before. This is a company that does uh, broadcasting rights uh, for many competitions, including La Liga and some of the top leagues like the Champions League, etc. So we go into their building and they host us. And there's a nice terrace, as you can see, a nice roof rooftop where we see all of Barcelona and people there uh, having a good time. Right now, um, I'm going over here by uh, by longer than what I wanted to. So just the student testimonials, I'll, I'll skip through them because you can see them on our website. But just to briefly touch upon them, you know, we had Ruth. She was working for, she still is working for Charlton Athletic as the academy secretary. And she did the master's program because she wanted to move into a leadership position in, at her club. Um, she was formerly working for Arsenal, then was uh, promoted into a, a better position in, uh, at Charlton. And now uh, she's looking to move in to work with the first team. So she did the master's and, um, and has found value in that uh, um, from, from that perspective. Antonio working from, for Vodafone. Um, so he didn't come from the football industry. But uh, working for Vodafone, he wanted to transition and work um, in, in the football industry. So now he's uh, uh, one of our former students. He, he did a project for Cadiz Football Club. Uh, so, you know, some people um, that do the course uh, end up uh, having opportunities in the football industry. And then we have others that are already uh, in the football industry, such as Wes Morgan uh, that I mentioned before. So there you can read a little bit about uh, his testimonial. But, you know, I won't read them verbatim. You can go to our web. But just to give you a little bit of uh, reference, because, you know, it always helps to know, well, who's done the program? Is this a program, especially online? I mean, I'm sure a, a lot of you people that um, are considering the program may think, well, is it a reputable institution? You know, I don't know who they are. Well, you know, if you see that Premier League players are doing this course, hopefully that gives you, um, you know, some, um, some um, element of, uh, of reference to say, well, you know, this is a program that is very reputable. And I, like, again, the guest speakers, uh, the students, as you can see, it's um, it's an institute that um, that's been around for a long time, and uh, and we um, we are very one of the things that we are very concerned with, and this is my personal um, objective is I don't like having transactionary uh, relationships with our students. So I don't I don't I don't feel comfortable with somebody doing our course, and then I don't have a relationship a personal relationship with them, and knowing who they are, what their aspirations are, what they're doing. Um, because th that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, I initially founded SBI with, um, with our partners, um, because this is a passion that I have. This is something that I'm, I'm really passionate about, helping people move into the, um, a career in sport, and particularly in football. And, um, and I take this very seriously. So those of you that have, may have done SBI courses before will know that uh, at SBI, we don't look at you guys at number, as numbers. We look at you guys as our family, and we take care of our family, and we want to make them you know, have success. And whatever it is that we can do, um, you can count on it that we're, we're going to be there to support you along your journey. Uh, finally, um, if you want to secure your spots, uh, where do you need to go? Well, our website is sbibarcelona.com. So that's SBI for Sports Business Institute, barcelona.com. You will see our master in football business and management, and you will, um, you know, you'll be able to read about uh, the application process. Um, the application process consists of a fee of 120 euros, and then you must send us via email your CV and a motivation letter telling us why you want to do the course. Uh, this is very important for us because we make sure that we select the right individuals each year. Um, uh, the cohort is very important for us, and we want to make sure that we filter people that have the right motivation, the right experience. Um, you know, there's, there's a few people that uh, we've uh, had to turn down already that have applied um, because they don't meet the criteria. So it is a program where you do need to apply and we need to evaluate um, who you are and why you're doing the course. Anyway, after you apply, you, you pay the 120 euro fee, you send your CV, you send your motivation letter. Our academic board that is comprised of myself and a few of the other um, speakers that you saw before, as well as staff of SBI, we all look at together, we sit down, we analyze the candidatures, and we decide who has the right profile to come onto the course. Usually, now we're getting to, you know, the last month, so usually it takes around five business days, um, but now we're taking a little bit less because we're meeting more regularly because more candidatures are coming in, so we're meeting every two, three days, so usually by three, four days, you'll have an answer. 
if you don't get accepted, we will refund you the 120 euro fee. So we believe, again, this goes back to our, our, our um, uh, what, what's the word, our culture, if you will, of, of making it into a, a, a um, 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 uh, don't believe that if you apply, pay 120 euros and we don't accept you, that we should take that money from you. We, we will refund you the, the 120 euros. And we've had to do that, as I said already, to a number of candidatures that, that don't meet the criteria because we are very strict with making sure, you know, who comes on board. And as long as they have the right motivation, the right, um, you know, um, aspirations, and of course experience plays a role in it, but it's not essential. If you don't have experience in football or if you don't have experience in general, um, you know, apply anyway. Worst case that um, you'll get is that if you don't get accepted this year, maybe we'll tell you and, and we'll give you feedback if you're not accepted as to why you were not accepted and potentially for next year, you, you know, you can apply. Right. So I've uh, spoken much longer than I wanted to. Um, so at this stage, um, I'll turn it over to you guys if you have any questions. Um, and let me just check the chat um, and see what we have here. So. Uh, right. So in the evening, Hamza says, so Hamza, yes, classes are held in the evening. So they're never held daytime local time in Spain. So they're always held 8 p.m. 8 p.m. local time in Spain, which is 7 p.m. in the UK. Um, so that's the first question there. Then George, George, hi, George. So George is already uh, part of the cohort. So George, nice to see you here. Could you please tell me more about the assessments and the final project? Any professional football, sorry, any professional football players on board this year? Sorry, I'm trying to get the chat here. Are you planning to bring Daniel G as a speaker? Okay, so there's a few questions there. So let me, let me start uh, unpacking uh, the different elements here. So first of all, yes, there are assessments and there is a final project. So, you know, basically what we want is that the assessments um, put you in scenarios where you have to uh, act uh, as a leader in the football industry. So, for example, you know, we could put an assignment for you and, you know, sometimes we'll vary, but we'll look at analyzing the financial statement of a football club. And obviously by then you will have had the, the, the class on, on finance and football. So to analyze it and to provide us an understanding as to how the club is, uh, from a financial standpoint, based on their latest annual report. That could be um, something that we've done in the past. I mean, sometimes we vary the assignments and we adapt them according to the new, you know, the new reality that we face in the industry. Um, so stuff like that is, is part of the assessments that we have. And then the final project, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. The final project is very much linked to your own aspirations. Now, what do I mean by this? I like to use the analogy of um, a mirror and a window, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, usually a final project will be a dissertation, a research project about what's happening in the industry. So that's what I call the window, right? You look at what's happening in the industry, you research, you analyze, you provide a report or a, or, or a, or a project or a business case, and you deliver that as your final project. And that's great, that's excellent. But that's just looking at one element. The big part, and this is where a lot of the times, you know, many people don't do this exercise, is that self-reflection, is that self-analysis of understanding where you are at yourself. And you're, you're going to see that you're going to be very honest with, with yourself when you do the final project, because we'll make you, we'll ask you the questions, and we'll put you in a vulnerable situation so that you actually have to really say, well, this is what I'm lacking. This is what I need to do. So the final project will also be that mirror looking internally at obviously your own goals and aspirations, but also what you need to work on um, in order to succeed or to have opportunities to optimize your, your career success in the football industry. So the final project is very much linked to what I talked about before in the mentorship, where you look at your career aspirations and we link it together with the research um, that you deliver. So um, I know perhaps now it's a little bit, um, you know, confusing if you haven't seen the, the full project uh, guidelines, but, um, but it is unique. It is something that, uh, as far as we know, not a lot of uh, 
um, institutes or academies or you know uh, projects are based on that. Usually they look at what's happening in the, in the industry and you research on that, but we like to focus also on the individual so that you have that self-reflection, self-analysis, and that accountability. I mean, let's face it, that's another big part of it. You know, um, doing a final project um, forces you to deliver a project that is then going to be evaluated not only by, you know, the faculty, but also your, your peers that are going to be listening and, uh, and learning from what you have to share. So there is that element of accountability. So the final project is very much linked to your own aspirations that you're going to be working throughout the course. That's why it's important to do the mentorship throughout the course so that when you select a final project, is based on something that is going to add value to you. Just to give you an example, last year, um, one of our students did his final project. Um, as he did the course and as he did the mentorship program, he then said, okay, now, uh, now I know what I want to do. He wanted to set up a consulting firm. Um, uh, he is um, looking at bringing adaptability to stadiums, so that's his, yeah, that's his area, that's where you know, he has expertise. But initially, when he did the master's program, he thought that you know, he would do it and see what would happen. As he did the mentorship sessions, he, he was then guided with our team, and eventually um, he thought and said, well, I want to do a business consulting uh, uh, project uh, based on, on, on a real life scenario that I want to execute. Anyway, to make a long story short, he provided a business case and now he's looking to set up this consulting firm and he's already had, you know, he already has a couple of contracts that he's secured um, to consult as to how to make stadiums more adaptable, um, uh, bring more people that um, have, um, you know, disabilities to, to, to football. And that was the area that he wanted to focus on. Um, and it's worked very well, but it, it wouldn't have been possible for him to do this final project had he not gone through the journey of understanding what his true aspirations were and perhaps he wouldn't have necessarily done this self-reflection exercise to understand that this was an area that he could potentially, um, you know, exploit. And now he's doing that, and he's he's consulting with a number of organizations. So, um, you know, that's just one example of somebody that uh, that really benefited from the final project. And then others, you know, um, we had somebody working for Tottenham Hotspur last year, who did the project, uh, the program, <clears throat> and he was based in Asia. Um, so initially when he was doing the final project, he had an idea and then he pivoted on that idea because again, he saw an opportunity to grow within his, his organization based on some of the feedback from our mentors. He pitched a project internally at Tottenham. Tottenham then said, yeah, okay, let's do it. You know, as long as you deliver it and run with it, we're happy for you to take that on. So his final project was actually something that was implemented at the club. So, you know, but it all goes back to what I said before. It's a journey. Right now, both you and I know 10% of that potential. And that other 90%, 90% is untapped potential that you, know, you will discover as you move forward in the course. And, and that's, the, that's the beauty of a program like this, that, that you discover and you, you, know, uh, you know, sometimes the word transformation gets overused, but you really go through a transformation process yourself. Um, so... It's something that um, that uh, that really goes a long way for for all individuals. So, George, hope that answered the question about uh, the final project. Um, how long did the did the session last on Thursday? Usually an hour. Usually an hour. So the sessions usually um, you know sometimes an hour and a half, an hour twenty, depending on we, if we go over. But we like to keep them very strict. Normally, what happens with the speakers is they deliver a about a half an hour presentation with a a couple of cases, and then we have half an hour of discussion. So usually there's, there's that, um, that half an hour of interaction or sometimes a little bit longer. Right, a couple of more things here that you had before. Are you planning to bring Daniel G as a speaker? Daniel is a speaker, but um, he's been uh, more involved with our other course, our, um, our uh, agents course, our intermediation course. Um, so for this program, we're not necessarily planning to bring him on, but we have a couple of recorded sessions with him that he's done with our other project, uh, our other programs. So if you wanted to hear what he had to say, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's recorded. And, and if you wanted to, you know, get in touch with him, of course, again, this goes to the network that we talked about before. You know, we can talk about once you start the program of how we can, uh, you know, put you in touch with executives like Daniel and, and many others. 
Okay. Um, and then he finally says, George, I'm very excited. Well, we're very excited, George. We're super excited to have you on board. Uh, as far as professional footballers, um, yes, we have a couple already that are shown in, showing an interest. One of them is Simon Cox. Simon is an English uh, player. He's uh, played in England for a number of years now. He's playing in Australia. Um, he did another course with us before, and uh, he's looking uh, to do this program as well. Uh, I believe he was on the call as well. Uh, I'm not sure if Simon is still around. Simon, if you're if you're here, just um, give us a holler in the chat so we know that you're around. Um, but Simon is just one of the players, and we're talking to a few others. We can't um, we can't tell the names just yet because um, you know these guys obviously have, uh, especially now with schedules, their uh, the seasons uh, are starting at at different times and the preseason and everything else. So um, you know. We're talking to a few other people, uh, professional players that are that are showing an interest, and um, yeah, we'll let you know. You be sure to be, you know check out our social media if we're able to get um, you know players uh, on board. Uh, we'll we'll let you know. Um, we're also talking to um, to a couple of um, legends. So who knows? I mean, it's hard to get these guys sometimes because they have busy schedules. But uh, there's uh, one or two Premier League legends as well that we're talking to through, through some of our contacts that, that may come on. Again, not a guarantee, but who knows. Last year we had uh, Troy Deeney from Watford. Those of you that follow the Premier League, um, yes, uh, Troy Deeney uh, for Watford, a very well-known guy in, uh, in English football, of course. So, um, and a super nice guy, super down to earth. Uh, you know, um, you'll see that, um, that um, you know, even if these players are are playing and you watch them on TV, um, they're, uh, they're individuals just like you and I, and they're super, super approachable when they come on the course and, uh, and add a lot of value to the discussions. Simon says he's here. Simon, good to see you. Um, hope uh, the recovery is going well, my friend, and uh, yeah, I look forward to having you join us. So Simon, uh, just to answer your question, George Simon is a professional footballer in the Western Sydney Wanderers in, in Australia. Um, right, so um, I think we've uh, just gone over the hour mark here, so if there's any questions, just uh, feel free to put them on here and um, and let us know. I think I haven't missed any. Um, Alfredo says, cheers, great explanation. Thanks, Alfredo. Uh, good to see you here. Um, so that's about it, I think. Santi, oh, hey, Santi. So Santi says, are the lab sessions in addition to the Thursday evenings? Uh, no, so Thursday evenings are are usually alternated. So we'll have two or three master classes. So let's say, for example, in a month, you'll have two Thursdays where you have, well, you'll have sorry where you will have master classes, and then the following week will be a lab session. So let's say, for example, we'll bring in a couple of speakers about sponsorship. So let's say we bring Rich Lamb uh, from uh, formerly with Man United and Inter, etc. Then the following week we bring in Carmen who's worked with Atletico Madrid, um, and they'll both talk about sponsorship. So then the following week, we may have a lab session that will be about sponsorship. So that's where Marcus will lead, Marcus Breglick will lead the lab session. Um, and the lab sessions are very similar to the, to the way that we structured the course that you participated in, Santi, which was the, the football marketing and management course. So they're very interactive, they're very dynamic, and Marcus and myself usually are present uh, Marcus um, is, is there. I'm usually there as well every, every week uh, for the lab sessions. Um, and this is when we bring in cases. So this is when we put in real life situations um, and, um, and you get to interact and engage with, um, with Marcus and the other participants of the course. Um, so, so that's another opportunity as well to get involved with you know, somebody like, uh, like him. Excellent. No, but that's a good question, Santi. And then we're also talking to more people to bring on as speakers. So even though all Thursday evenings or most Thursday evenings will be covered, there will be some Tuesdays, there will be some Wednesdays because we felt that it was important to bring a few more executives. So we're talking to somebody at Chelsea and it's not 100% confirmed, but we're talking to somebody in the communications department at Chelsea Football Club. Um, we're talking to um, somebody at CONCACAF as well. Uh, so a few others that, um, you know, stay tuned as we're gonna be announcing. But good question, thanks Santi. Uh, right, let's see here. Hamza, in the two-day tour in Barcelona, can we organize a friendly football match with all SBI students? Hey, that would be a good idea. I mean, uh, 
that's something that we can we can try and uh, fit in. Why not? Um, potentially, we can. Do, we we usually have a pretty tight schedule, um, but potentially, if people arrive early, we can you know hire out a pitch and and do something like that. Um, and, you know, I'm a I'm a top goal scorer, so you'll see uh, me heading those uh, those ball in the in the back of the net. No, but all all jokes aside, yeah, potentially, why not? We could we could organize that. Um, so we could. There's plenty of time. Um, Probably not in the two days. Probably that would have to be uh, in uh, in the day prior. But, um, but that's a good idea as well. I mean, uh, why not? And if we have some professional footballers, maybe they'll uh, you know they'll give us a clinic, right? Um, but um, no, um, yeah, you'll see that it's a very engaging two days uh, in Barcelona. Right. Um, okay. Well, I think uh, that's that's me for uh, the questions that I um, that I've been answering in the chat. I'm not sure if you guys have anything else that you'd like to bring forward before we wrap this up. I know it's it's getting late now, uh, especially for some of you that are connecting in, in time zones that are not in Europe. Um, uh, so um, that said, we can wrap this up tonight. If you want more information, uh, get in touch with us. Our team is uh, you know ready to answer your questions. Um, you have uh, our contact details. Uh, if you want to join uh, not just the course, but if you want to join a family, the SBI family, um, then we can, you know, talk about how we can, uh, you know, look at where you're at and uh, how you can apply. So that's the SBI family uh, from last year's uh, cohort. Um, and this is uh, our team uh, that can get in touch with you with uh, specific queries about the masters. Obviously, if you want more information and you've been in touch with others, um, as well, you can um, you know continue that conversation. And the final thing is to say uh, thank you because uh, you know you've taken time out of your busy schedule tonight. Um, so uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. One last final question here I see from Santi: Is there a word count for word count for the final project if if done as a dissertation? Yes, there is a word count. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not. Uh, I don't have it here in front of me, but uh, there is a word count uh, to submit. But you'll, you'll see that it's not the typical dissertation of the typical academic uh, project because we really uh, focus on it being industry oriented to optimize um, your opportunities to, to use that as a, as a project that is not only going to be used as, a, as an evaluation or an assessment, but also something for your future, which is, which is a big thing, right? Um, looking at how you leverage the program. Um, perfect. Well, thank you, Santi. And, uh, Glad we're in uh, in the fantasy uh, league together. Santi, of course, is um, is a part of uh, the SBI family already because he participated in another one of our programs, and he had an excellent idea. He said, "Why don't we start a fantasy football league?" Um, so the people on the course, you know, we started a, a fantasy football, uh, or he started it, and we joined. And now that the season's going to start, it's going to be nice to you know to have that that additional element of engagement and uh, and see how we do with uh, with that fantasy league. So. Just to show that um, you know, people when they do this course, they really become part of a group. They become part of a family. So you're not just going to build contacts, which is good. It's great to build industry contacts, but you're going to build friends and friends that are going to be there for for a long time. Um, and not only people from the cohort that you join, but people that are former students of ours. Sometimes you know, it's funny because sometimes I get a WhatsApp message from students, and somebody may have done the program two years ago and somebody four years ago. Um, and they send us a picture and they say, hey, we met up in whatever, in London or in Madrid or in, you know, America, wherever. And they send us a picture and it's two FBI students that didn't know each other from the course because they didn't have the same cohort. But through the community, you know, got in touch with each other. And, and sometimes now, uh, you know, we're surprised and we thought, oh, well, I didn't know such and such knew that person. But just the family itself um, grows and connects without us, you know, just by being part of the SBI community and, and groups. George says, what league is it? Uh, and if he can join. Oh, wow, excellent. Well, George, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give you the details. Um, this is for the football marketing and management course that we started it, but, but if you want to join, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll be able to get you there. So uh, I'll send you the link and, uh, and yeah, we'll be, it'll be great to have you uh, in the fantasy league. And, and maybe we'll start one for, for the master as well. Um, perfect. Santi says, absolutely. I'll send you the code to share with Georg. I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, Georg. Georg, George? 
uh, I'm sure you'll correct me once you'll start the course. Um, but uh, yes, that'll be great to, to connect with you um, and have you in the Fantasy League. All right, guys. Well, um, that's it for me. Um, if there's no other questions, we'll leave it here. Obviously, if you have more questions, get in touch with me. If you have, some of you already have my WhatsApp, uh, those that are interested in the program that I've been in conversations with you, just send me a message via WhatsApp. Um, if you want to engage with our team, just send an email. Um, if you're ready to apply, of course, you know, the, the application process, um, you know what it's like now. Um, the, the application period is still open. We have a deadline on September 15th, which is, it's not, a, it's not a strict deadline, but it's a recommended deadline. And the reason that's, that's recommended is because right now we're at about 70%, I think, 65-70% um, full on the spots for the program. So there's, a, there's about 30% uh, of the spots still remaining. So what happens? Well, usually what happens is near the start of the course date, more and more applications begin to come in and fewer spots are available. So that means you're competing against more candidates um, if you delay your application up until the end of, you know, the month. So we, to, to, to um, incentivize you to apply early, of course, we've put this deadline on September 15th. And it also is to your advantage because um, it means that you are um, being evaluated as a candidature um, with, with sometimes less um, less candidatures than if you apply, say, at the end of the month where we may get, you know, uh, 15, 20 candidatures in the final week and there's only two or three spots remaining. So, yeah, if you want to avoid being in that position, it's, it's probably best that you're thinking of applying, um, you know, sooner rather than later. And we'll give you a, we'll give you a response uh, relatively soon <clears throat> and feedback um, about your candidature. So, um, anyway, thank you very much for, for all of you guys for attending tonight. Uh, it's a real pleasure, um, and um, yeah, look forward to seeing some of you interested candidates apply, and to those that are already part of the course, um, you know, we're very excited to have you on board, and you're going to, you know, we're convinced you're going to find a lot of value in the program. So that's, uh, that's it for tonight. Um, all the best. Hope you can join us for the master's program. You won't regret it. You'll become uh, part of a family that is going to be there for, for your support, uh, not just throughout the course, but, uh, but much longer after that. Uh, along your career journey. Um, so take care, everybody. Have a great evening. Um, enjoy uh, the rest of your week and uh, get in touch with us because we'd love to hear from you. So all the best and see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now. Thanks, everybody.